Hi folks, welcome to Scholar Bot Tarot. Just call me Mayfield and thanks a ton for stopping by the study space. Today I wanted to do another hashtag. It's been a really long time since I've done a video and I just wanted to kind of use this opportunity to pick up the camera and get back in there. Today's hashtag is going to be a hashtag circular decks by Akali Sunflower. Um, I believe her video came out about three weeks ago and it's honestly been on my mind for a little while now, so I figured I would go ahead and just kind of dive in. Akali Sunflower has so kindly given us th given us five prompts that I have right here. I'm just going to go ahead and go one by one. So the first question is, what draws you to circular decks? And if I'm being honest, uh, I think it might be just pure function. It's not necessarily because it's a round deck that draws me to it, it's simply that it's a round deck that works for what that deck may or may not be trying to do. Sometimes there are happy accidents where, you know, a round deck is absolutely perfect for a particular theme that a deck is going for. Other times it's round just for the sake of being round, and the latter is not my preference. Number two. What challenges are present when it comes to circular decks? And I would probably have to say shuffling them. The two decks that I have are technically not hard to shuffle, like one of them I can riffle shuffle pretty well. Um, however, I do prefer to hand over hand for a circular deck for some weird reason. But even then, I feel like they roll out of your hand like really fast. <laughs> Honestly, that's about the only trouble that I've run into with the circular decks in my collection. Question number three. How many circular decks are in your collection? Two. Number four. What is your most recent circular deck purchase? And I guess we'll go ahead and let that bleed into question number five, which is, well, prompt number five, which is uh, show us your circular deck collection. And my two ones are the Madame Clara's Two Penny Oracle and and uh, Quarter Press's Phantasma Oracle. And so Phantasma Oracle is actually the most recent, and this definitely goes into that prompt of, you know, what draws you to circular decks. And for this one, there were actually two reasons. For, for this particular one, because this one is like limited edition. There were only a certain amount made. I want to say it was 50, and I really wanted it in my life primarily because of the container that it comes in. So the Phantasma Oracle is this like cartoony Oracle deck. And if you're familiar with Quarter Press, they've done other decks like the Tarot of the Unknown, which was a deck based off of the cartoon what was it oh my god why am i why am i blanking on it over the garden wall jesus christ why did it take me forever to figure that out so the deck was based off of over the garden wall which i highly recommend for autumn viewing like it is it's something that i watch the entire series it's super short i watch it like every thanksgiving day so these are the cards and they're really small, so I obviously can't riffle shuffle them. I mean, not with that attitude, I can't. But I would be afraid to try because um, the the edges are a little a little rough, to be honest. But you know, this deck is quite clearly a labor of love uh, by by Chris from Quarter Press. I believe when he had announced that he was coming out with these circular versions of the decks. He basically said that he can only do 50 or whatever number he gave because he is like like pressing these like each card to like cut the corners like he's doing that by hand and by himself. And so, you know, for for an artist to go through like that much um that much labor, like that's a lot for a single person. But this deck is really cool cuz I do pair it with the Tarot of the Unknown, and I also pair it with the, I believe it's called the Mystical Medleys Tarot, which is another, like, cart cartoon deck based off of, um, 
I think the general term is rubber hose animation. I like to call it Fleischer animation because it does remind me a lot of, of uh, like Fleischer cartoons like Betty Boop and stuff like that. Uh, and I think I think it's is Popeye a Fleischer Fleischer uh, animation. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if I totally got that wrong. But this deck is really really cool and fun, and it's also really tiny. So I, I really liked that for this for this type of deck. Um, and you know, it comes in this film box. So it looks like like it's, you know, in a film reel, which I thought was was pretty awesome and very topical for the type of the type of art that this is. So the second one does have a little bit more of a story to it. Well, more or less. So um, I have quite a few of uh, Madame Clara's decks. I believe I believe the artist's name is Rick, and he has the the five cent tarot. I think I pre-ordered that like the first edition a long time ago, and I really like that concept because it's one of the few decks that I use that has like reversals on it. I typically don't work with reversals because my brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, but here is, I mean, I guess I should show you the box. Like here's the box, it says know thyself. And you open it up and there's the, the fun little stuff. I'm never removing this by the way. Uh, sometimes the one of the cards will get stuck at the bottom, but it's worth it to not have them knocking around everywhere. But here is, here's the two penny. So I did back this on, on uh, Kickstarter. I actually have the standard version of it, which is just a regular tarot size. And like, that's originally what I wanted, but I guess what ended up happening in the production phase is that somehow the, the cards that were supposed to be, I think it was copper, ended up being lavender. <laughs> so they were lavender edged decks and they were kind of an oopsie, but he put them on sale, like, like I mean, not on sale sale, but like he ended up selling them. And so of course I kind of jumped on it and I'm like, oh, I think I should maybe get the round size because I think that the way that this deck is, deck is like, formatted here. If you can see, it's, it has like the keyword, which I'll get into in just a second, by the way. Uh, it has a keyword, and then it has three other keywords around the rims of the cards. Um, I don't fully, I haven't fully gotten into the system of this, of this concept, but um, basically there's like, uh, you know, a positive, um, a negative and like a deviation. That's not the verbiage that's used in the guidebook, but that's like what I remember the basic concept being. And and just the way that you would shuffle this, like if you do like a like a hand over hand shuffling, um, you can really get. See, there you go. You can really get any any number of of the keywords around the rim. Whereas in the standard edition, which I don't have in front of me, unfortunately, and I can't be bothered to get up, um, <laughs> it's it's like the positive at the top, the negative at the bottom, and the deviation is like right underneath the the main keyword, but it's upside down, which is pretty on brand for for uh, like the five cent deck because this is supposed to be. A companion to the five cent deck. And so the concept. And this is going to be a little hard for me to explain because this would have been uh, a topic that I would have done in a video essay, but I feel like I don't have enough uh, research under my belt for this. But this deck is, is based off of phrenology which is like this pseudoscience that was particularly popular during the progressive era. And if you know anything about the progressive era in US history, it was just riddled with scientific racism. And that's no bueno, right? 
So I had my, not doubts, but I had my apprehensions for bringing this deck into my collection. Uh, because, you know, you don't really want to perpetuate that kind of stuff within the media or the text that you consume. But I made an exception for this because phrenology doesn't work as a science, right? Like, you can't actually check out the grooves of someone's brain and quantify their personality or how successful they'll be. That's just not, that's just not a thing. <laughs> um, but it does work as, as divination. And I mean, if I may be so bold, divination in some ways, ways is like not so much a pseudoscience, but it is something that we use to better understand ourselves and understand our situations and the way that we think about things. And so I do think that this, I mean, especially as like a circular deck, I mean, I do think that this ultimately works pretty well. Um, I don't know if I would be well equipped to really do any kind of video on that, by the way, but if you're interested, I guess, I guess let me know and I can, I can break out the... I can break out the, the US history in me if you really want to. These are my two circular decks. I do thoroughly enjoy them. I do tend to use this one a little bit more than I use the Phantasma Oracle. I feel like this is kind of seasonal, to be honest, but um, it is a lot of fun to work with, as is, weirdly enough, this one, as awkward as it is to look at sometimes. But thank you very much to uh, Akali Sunflower for starting this hashtag. It was a great opportunity for me to just kind of get back into recording videos because things have been super busy, but you know, it happens to the best of us. And I do look forward to bringing you guys some more videos and also holding myself accountable for all of the fun tarot book reports that I really want to continue doing. So until then, folks, Catch you next time. Bye.